Welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. I want to thank you for joining us today on the show. As always, right here on Red Carpet, we bring you the latest in entertainment, news, in sports, in fashion, in film and television from around the world. Let's begin. And we start with some news in the world of literature. Nigerian author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, whose book Half of the Yellow Sun won the Women's Prize for Fiction back in 2007, has now been voted for the winner of winners of the Notable Award. The book, based on Nigeria's Biafran War, was voted by the public in celebration of the 25th anniversary of the prize. I'm especially moved to be voted winner of winners because this is the prize that first brought a wide readership to my work and has also introduced me to the work of many talented writers, said Adichie on her big win. And now to Mali, where artists from around West Africa gathered for this year's annual Slam Poetry Festival. From Bamako, reporter Annie Risenberg followed one young Malian poet who is backing stereotypes in the conservative nation. Check it out. Aisha Diara first learned of slam poetry when her high school held a competition. Now, she's been a slam poet since 2015 and takes part in Mali's annual slam poetry festival. <laughs> The poets, like Diara, perform spoken word poetry in front of an audience and judges. She sees her art as a form of activism, meant to highlight the lives of Malian women and girls. The subjects that I talk about, often people think that they're too bold. When I talk about circumcision of young girls, it's generally a taboo subject in Africa. They think it's too bold. But others congratulate me because there are many who do not dare to venture there. Slam poetry is a relatively new music scene in Mali. A country with deep musical and oral traditions, Mali is regarded as a musical crossroads in Africa. Slam first appeared in Mali in 2006, years after it gained popularity in the United States. The slam poets for us, they are full-fledged musicians. We accept them as being musicians. This year, the festival was held in November, months later than usual, due to the coronavirus and a curfew imposed after a coup d'etat in August. Diara performed on stage for the first time in nearly a year. I have joy in my heart. It's like a child who could walk, and suddenly he fell ill and couldn't walk. Later, the doctor tells him that he will walk again. You can imagine the joy. So I have this joy. The annual festival is run by a Malian organization called Agoratoire, founded by one of Mali's first slam poets, Aziz Kone. As you know, everyone knows it. Since 2012, Mali has been weakened by a security crisis, by a social crisis. So we saw that it's important for us today to hold this festival in the name of peace and social cohesion. This year saw Mali struggling with both regional instability and a worldwide pandemic, which left cultural activities and the normally lively music scene in shambles. But slam poetry continues to attract young Malians committed to a better future for their country. Annie Reisenberg for VOA News, Bamako, Mali. And there are some big name winners at this year's E People's Choice Awards, honoring fan favorites in music, TV, film, and social media. Jennifer Lopez received the People's Icon Award, Tyler Perry was honored with the People's Champion of 2020 Award, and Tracy Ellis Ross was presented with the Fashion Icon Award. Will Smith won Best Male Movie Star for Bad Boys for Life, while Tiffany Haddish was named Best Female Movie Star of 2020 for Like a Boss. Haddish used her acceptance speech to raise awareness about what is happening in Africa. I also want to give a shout out to all my people in Africa that are struggling right now, she said. 
All the people that are in Nigeria, Cameroon, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, if you're out there struggling, I'm praying for you, and I hope that all my fans pray for Africa too, because we shouldn't have to be going through the things we're going through. The show was broadcast live from the Bar Car Hangar in Santa Monica with a virtual audience while presenters and winners accepted their awards in person with socially distanced protocols. Now check this out, South African comedian Trevor Noah was talking about Africa's coronavirus response during an episode of The Daily Shows with Trevor Noah when Voice of America made a cameo. Now in several shots of the show, you can see video footage from our very own shows like Straight Talk Africa and our voices with our reporter Salem Solomon. He even sent samples of fruit to be tested for the virus as a way to expose false positives. Zoe Ludaki. Peter Monrovia, residents are taking matters into their own hands. And Heidi Fitzpatrick. Being praised for their approach to controlling the spread of COVID-19. Well done to our colleagues who produced this content that made its way into the popular TV show. And following in the footsteps of his wife, former U.S. President Barack Obama has a new memoir out in which he shares his hopes for the next generation. My book is for those young people, an invitation to once again remake the world and to bring about through hard work, determination, and a big dose of imagination, an America that finally aligns with all that is best in us, says America's first black president in an excerpt from A Promised Land. That is the title of the book. The 44th U.S. president reveals how he and his wife Michelle were drained physically and emotionally when they left the White House in January 2017. For a month, Michelle and I slept late, ate leisurely dinners, went for long walks, swam in the ocean, took stock, replenished our friendship, rediscovered our love, and planned for a less eventful but hopefully no less satisfying second act, he says. And next up, we have a story of Ngadi Smart, a Sierra Leonean photographer in Côte d'Ivoire who specializes in capturing issues like feminism, female and male dynamics, and gender similarities. In this episode of our Picture Africa series, produced by our colleague Betty Ayub, Smart shares her inspiration. My name is Ingadi Smart. I am a Sierra Leonean photographer based in Cote d'Ivoire. What inspires me in my work is representation of black people in all its different facets. Yeah, just general women's issues, feminism, female and male dynamics, also themes that come up currently in my work. My series, The Faces of Abisa, started out by me attending Abisa Festival, which is uh, an event that occurs every year in um, Grand Bassam, um, Cote d'Ivoire. And it's a two-week festival, uh, which is part of the Enzima people, which are in southeastern Cote d'Ivoire and southwestern Ghana. Uh, and it's basically a celebration of culture, of music, of, of life basically as um, they, everyone is expected to come clean of everything that they've done during the year at this festival and there's a lot of um, interesting uh, traditional wear. My series, Longing and Belonging, was a series that I created uh, because I was inspired by the close ties that create a bond. Also, gender similarities is a recurrent theme in my work, um, how, how society deems the male and the female as essentially different, but we're actually a lot more similar than we think. And I wanted to also show the vulnerability in masculinity and femininity and just challenge um, society's preconceptions of how women and men should be. So Grand Bassam is an old French colonial seaside town and it's now a UNESCO World um, Heritage Site. It's filled with 18th 
to 20th century architecture, which is in ruins at the moment. So I really wanted to show the dramatic contrast between, you know, the, the clothes, the outfits and the models against this uh, decaying um, structure. The whole idea behind the shoot was also environmental based. A lot of the ideas came from looking up African traditional wear. The flower ornaments that you see them wearing, I had designed, but I got that from African traditional wear made of raffia. So I just felt like it was a, a different way of showing African culture, traditional African culture. With the thing that's happened with the African continent in the past, a lot has been decided for us and I feel like this is the time now for us to decide our story. The fashion industry which used to rely on face-to-face -face interaction has been forced to adapt to COVID-19 realities for employees. VOA's Maxim Maskalkov has our story. Check it out. Working virtually has put a temporary hold on workplace dress codes and shifted the focus to looking one's best on video conference for work. Well, that's a new reality now, right? So a lot of us can't see each other in person, so we have to do a lot of uh, Zoom meetings, video meetings. Um, and I thought, you know, you still have to see each other, so <laughs> you still have to worry about how you look, whether it's your makeup, your hair, um, accessories, you know, clothing, well, at least the top half. Personal stylist Tin Lin has shifted her focus to helping clients look their best on virtual conferences. Typically, the consultation of personal stylists range from $70 to $325. The client has to bring everything in front of the computer, show me different pieces they have, things that they're happy about, things that they're not happy about, and I kind of give them advice um, on whether to keep it or not. Washington DC stylist and designer Jason Burr published a series of Instagram video lessons on Zoom and other video conference meetings. Work an interior designer and work with a stylist such as myself to figure out, okay, what colors work best with my skin tone? What should I wear if I paint the wall this color? What should I wear in front of it? What should the background and surroundings look like? Um, what There should be a great piece of artwork hanging behind you as well. Owner of an image consulting company DC Style Factory, Rosanna Wolmerhausen, says everything matters, even the background. You really want to do the work to figure out where in your home is going to be most optimal for a Zoom call. And the key, the key um, element of that is the lighting. Set up a little desk area for yourself. Um, that has a background that is pretty neutral. COVID has had a definite impact on clothing retailers. Walmart says that in the first half of 2020, they have sold considerably more tops and jackets than pants and skirts. Office apparel retailers are changing their focus too, shifting the attention from an overall look to what meets the eye through Zoom and Skype or some other video meeting. Maxim Moskalko for VOA News, Washington. And who is the sexiest man alive in 2020? I think it was... I think... Well, it is not me. Oh. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. According to People magazine, the winner is the actor and producer Michael B. Jordan. He celebrated the achievement on his Instagram. Personally, I wish him nothing but the best. Congratulations to you, Michael B. Jordan. Next year, I got you. And with that, we come to the end of our show today. I want to thank you for hanging out with me. My name is Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voanews.com. We are also on all social media platforms, on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Until next time, goodbye, everyone.